This morning's Breakfast Bible Bite is found in Psalm 44, verses 6 through 7, where we learn to thank God for his intervention in our lives as he protects us from our enemies. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. But you have saved us from our adversaries, and you have put to shame those who hate us. Israel of today must accept the conclusion of David that in the coming days she may be forced to employ weapons of warfare to defend against those whose desire it is to annihilate her. But it will not be those weapons that yield the victory. It will be God, their Savior, who will put to shame her adversaries. Perhaps this is why God has called on the Hebrews and the New Testament church to pray for the peace in Jerusalem, Psalms 122. 6. Look at willowy Israel and how God has protected her even in these many times before the Six-Day War of 67. We read in 2 Samuel 5, 17 through 25, of one such miraculous battle, paraphrased, beginning at verse 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, they mobilized all of their forces to capture him. But David was told they were coming. The Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Rephraim. But David asked the Lord, Should I go and fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied to David, Yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. So David went to Baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. He burst through the enemies like a raging flood. So he named the place Baal-perazim, which means the Lord who burst through. But after a while, the Philistines returned and again spread out across the valley of Rephraim. And again, David asked the Lord what to do. Do not attack them straight on, the Lord replied. Instead, circle around behind them and attack them near the poplar trees. And when you hear the sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on alert. That will be a signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what the Lord commanded, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. If we remain faithful to our Lord and remember to give thanks for every, if for even a little victories in our lives, then we will be like God's special possession, Israel, as we rely on passages like Romans 8, 28, 29, and 31. Promises to Christians. And we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, and to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Have you ever wondered what God's purpose is for humanity? This is the subject of the entirety of scriptures. It is all about God's plan to separate for himself a free-willed people who will willingly choose to love him as we acknowledge the validity of his righteous judgment and as our creative sovereignty by taking on the image and the attributes of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit as we become more and more like Jesus.